another culture. Let's talk about let's talk about the Greeks. Okay, the Greek culture, the particularly the woman in their culture was nothing to them. The, the the husband could just divorce for any reason. They could do whatever they wanted. Very very loose society. Then the Romans take over and put the kibosh on that whole regime. And for the first 520 years of recorded Roman history, not a single one divorce was recorded. Now, there probably was some going on. Not one recorded. First recorded divorce in Roman history, 234 BC. And the, and the scenario was a man was married to a woman who was unable to produce a child for that man. Divorced. Now... As it went on, that Greek culture basically started weaving its way in through the Roman culture. And next thing you know, it's, it's taken over and it's running rampant again. Now, picture yourself at the time of, the, of this letter right here, okay? Again, we're talking about the city of Corinth. Paul, God's writing through Paul to this city right there. And the same thing is going on. In the Jewish culture who was living in underneath that Roman rule at that time, they were big time against divorce. They cited Malachi 2 all the time, which basically said, we're going to get into later, God hates divorce. In fact, there's actually tears on the altar of heaven as a result of divorce. But, now this is the Jewish leaders at the time. No, no. But they would start finding a way around that, that text. As we'll go on, we'll continue to give you some more insight on that. The Corinthian church was confused, man. They were confused. There were people that were married, and one of the spouses would get saved, and the other one wasn't, and they'd be like, well, should I just dump this person now? I mean, that person in the church is looking pretty good. I mean, maybe I'll just go hook up with them and give them the boot there. They're not saved. There's all kinds of stuff going on. They are being more lenient about divorce. There was a lawyer who was bragging recently about his ability to, 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 uh, to, how do I say it, to let a divorce go through via mail. Bragging about it. Oh, I've got so sufficient, he's in the Vegas area, I think. I've gotten so sufficient in this. Uh, just, you know, give me a little bit of stuff, I'll work it out, boom, boom, I'll knock out like 50, 60, 70 divorces in no time. Bragging about it. It's where we find ourselves in today's culture. Much the same back in that culture. And so Paul's going to, he's going to start addressing this situation. And again, as I said, I'm a, I've gone, I'm a kid that have, has seen the effects of divorce. I know that some of us in here have gone through it. And maybe from non-biblical reasons as well. But the fact is, through that, God's a God of grace. So don't take this as a beating from your path. Don't take that. Now we want to learn from it. And there's some people in here that maybe you're single. I'm desiring this Bible study would, God would exhort you and show you the effects that divorce has. 1 Corinthians 7. Let's see what God says through Paul, starting in verse 10. Now to the married, I command, yet not I, but the Lord, a wife is not to depart from her husband. But even if she does depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And a husband is not to divorce his wife. Pause right there. Now, if you recall, last week, the title of the message basically was Don't Deprive. And we looked at, ladies, don't deprive the man's big need of sexual intimacy. <clears throat> Guys, don't deprive the woman of that emotional connection and that affection. We talked about that. So the first section of 1 Corinthians, don't deprive. The second section, don't divorce. Next week we'll get into don't be distracted. This week right here, now to the married, he says in verse 10, I commend, yet not I, but the Lord. What is he saying? Paul's saying, Jesus already talked about this. If you look at Matthew 5 and Matthew 19, we're going to get into a little bit. Jesus already touched this topic. He says, not I, but the Lord. He already, and he says this in verse 10, not to depart. That, that Greek word, karitzo, don't depart. Now, 
If you are in an abusive relationship, get out. You're not expected to say you seek refuge ASAP, and you pray for that person who is the person inflicting that abuse. You pray for that person, that they would be restored and you would be connected again. His reason, he's directing this to now the wives. There are the wives that were saying, well, I, I need to be more spiritual. I'm just going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to dump my husband. I'm going to take off and I'm going to be more spiritual now. I don't want to be drugged down by this guy. He's, he's, he doesn't want anything to do with Jesus. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave and I'm going to really grow in the Lord. I'm going to leave him in the dust. And Paul says, no, don't depart. But even if she does depart, right? Because Paul knows we're humans. <laughs> you know, we don't take instruction well. He says, hey, don't depart your husband. But if you do depart, you know. If you do depart, you've got two options. You can remain unmarried or you can have reconciliation. God's goal will always be, hear me now, no matter what goes on in your marriage, God's goal will always be reconciliation. That word in the Greek, there's a definition that I like. It's return to favor with. Return to that spouse and have, start having favor with. Not easy. Not easy. He's, he's sharing. Return to favor. Sometimes I, I, I believe in my heart, sometimes separation isn't a bad thing. You have marital struggles. You got, you're going through it right now. I'm not telling you go separate, but I'm saying if you are separated at this point, sometimes it's not a bad thing. I know for me personally, sometimes I'll start taking my wife and kids for granted. And then for some reason, I'll, I'll go on a trip. Case in point, I went to a pastor's retreat, you know, a couple weeks ago. And for me, it's good for me to just take off for a while. Because then what happens, man? I get back and I'm like, oh my goodness. I can't believe how much. Okay, when's that plane leave? Can it, can it leave a day earlier? And I start getting this. Now I get back and there's this connection again. And there's this return to favor with. And you, and you, and you appreciate it that much more. You say, dude, you don't know my spouse. I'm not coming back. No way. Here's what happens, I think, sometimes. If you'll allow God to work in your heart and to my heart, there'll be a time of separation and one spouse or another will move out and they'll be in a, like an apartment, a little efficiency apartment. And, you know, it's frozen dinners, it's macaroni and cheese. It's, where's my socks, you know? I got dirty underwear, you know? The kids aren't coming in the morning and, and tackling you at six in the morning anymore. That warm embrace by your spouse is gone. Separation, but haven't put the final tie on it. And God's saying, remain unmarried. There needs to be work in both spouses, but then there needs to be a connection, a reconciliation. Many times, I believe, there is a rush into divorce. There's a rush away. There's a rush maybe to, to get with someone else. I've seen it happen. There was a, a guy that, uh, that I had a chance to minister to who was an alcoholic for years. Bartender. His wife was a bartender. And he came to Calvary Chapel one time and God just saved his life. He just gave his life right to the Lord. He, cold turkey. And... He went home and said, hey, babe, I found Jesus, man. Let's, let's do it. Come on, me and you together. You can accept Christ. We'll change our life and we'll, we'll get after it. You know what his wife said? You are weird. You've lost your mind. Are you kidding me? Never. Never. Come to find out, his wife had a horrible experience as a kid growing up in the church and was bitter towards the church. No way. Well, she moves out. She takes off and goes and gets her own place. And, and he would come to me heartbroken time after time. And I would just love on him. And I, would, and I would share with him, be patient. Please be patient. 
There is no 